the one man said to the other man, what are we going to do when we get through the roof? See, there's so much in this story no one's thought about. We didn't think how serious these men had to get to get in to see Jesus. Because, see, no one carried a rope with them. You know, inside of the New Living Translation, it says they pulled some tile off the roof. It wasn't a tile roof. It was a clay roof that was probably 20 inches to 2 foot thick of hard clay. They didn't have a jackhammer from Lowe's or Home Depot. They didn't have a steel bar. They had to probably dig with their knives because you know there was a Mexican in the bunch. When there's a Mexican in the bunch, you know there's a knife around. Come on. Them Mexicans all got knives, and usually they're big ones. How many seen the movie Young Guns? That Mexican had about a dozen knives on him. So he probably handed Little Wolf a knife. Flathead Tom and even Rock got a knife. So they all started digging. But you know, serious men, when they start to sweat, and they start to get tired, they still keep going on because they get serious. You know, see, when we don't hang with serious people, they say, let's forget this. Let's just go home. Let machine gun preacher keck and end up catching the next taxi out of here. Let's go home. But they said, no, he's going in to see Jesus tonight. So you want to know something? When all of us men that stood up here tonight started this life, we didn't get serious. We started this life all messed up. That's how Little Wolf got the name Little Wolf. Big Al got the name Big Al, Bomber. Rock, Flathead, well we know where Flathead Tom got his name, look at his head. You know, they dug through the roof and they lowered the paralyzed man down and Jesus healed him. You know, for all of you that know the story, there was religious people in the house and they thought it was awful that Jesus said your sins are forgiven and Jesus said, well, what's easier for me to say? Get up and walk? So finally Jesus said, get up and walk. The whole part of the story, what I'm talking about tonight, it's about you. How serious are you? How serious are you? You know, I was with Little Wolf the other night at the clubhouse. You don't know how hard it is to be around a one percenter group and walk up and hand them a card to come hear about Jesus Christ. See, that's harder than digging through the roof. What are you people doing? You know, maybe this message tonight, it's not about any of us guys. It's all about you. How serious are you? We got relatives, we got friends that need to know Jesus Christ. What are you doing? You know, sometimes we stand up, we want to tell everyone, you're going to hell, repent. Come on. The last thing anyone needed to, uh, to end up telling me or Little Wolf that we were going to hell because you want to know something? We knew we were on that ride. We knew we were on that ride. Matter of fact, we might have even told people, all right, let's go. I'm going to take you with me. But how serious are you with your walk with Christ? You know, I tell this one story, and I told it the other night about going to the Kid Rock concert. 
lady came in. I was in the VIP lounge in the back. How about go ahead and start playing softly? I was in the VIP lounge in the back of this concert of Kid Rock. And this lady come walking in. And I could tell she was sick. And I walked over to her and I started talking with her. And I said, you know, I don't look like a preacher. But I am. I said, can I pray with you? And she said, yeah, yeah. She says, they say you're a hell's angel preacher. And I said, no, no, I'm just a preacher. She was in fourth stage of cancer. You know, in the VIP lounge, they're all partying, snorting coke, drinking booze, smoking dope. When I got all done praying, everyone in that room was gathered around me, weeping. I don't know what I said. I don't know how long I prayed. But when I was leaving that place that night, I said, you know, Lord, if people back home seen me, they'd have done think I backslid. And the Lord said this to me. He said, you know, there was a lot of Christians at that concert. A lot of Christians there. But there was only one that brought me with him. And it was you. How serious are you? You know, I remember when I was a kid, I was raised in a Pentecostal church. See, there's a thing about a Pentecostal church. They can teach you how to pray. I was raised in the old-fashioned Assembly of God church. When you went to the altar, there was no, like nowadays, you go to the altar and you kneel down, you say a couple words, and you get up and you go. But back in those days, there was such thing as called, you prayed through. You prayed through. Sometimes it was all night long. I remember when I was a kid, your mama brought you to church with your pajamas on. Because you didn't know what time you were going home. People were serious about serving God. See, what happens when you get serious about serving God, you get people like Big Al and Little Wolf and Flathead Tom and the Machine Gun Preacher, they get saved. When people like you get serious. You know how many machine gun preachers are still out there? How many big owls are still out there waiting on you to get serious? You know, I'm going to ask everybody here for just a moment to close your eyes. And I want you to just think about yourself. Think about yourself and what you're doing. Are you serious? Are you serious? Did you come down here for bike week to get serious about doing God's work? Or was it just about the ride? Was it just about the look? Or was it about getting serious with God? You know, as we start singing this song, How Great Is Our God, and God starts moving on you, I want you to begin to walk down here so I can pray with each one of you. But I don't want anyone to even stand up. I don't want anyone to even start to walk down here. Unless today's going to be different. Today you're going to get serious. Today you're going to get serious about serving God. Today you're going to get serious about doing God's work. Today you're going to go over and beyond what God called you to do because you are getting serious. Now as they start to sing, let God minister to you. Go ahead. 
splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. tonight. Listen, tonight we're going to get serious about digging through this roof. See, to get serious, we got to make sure everything is right with God. And you know, I know all of you here, many of you have been born again for a long time, but you know, sometimes we need to make sure it's right. And anyone else out there that you want to say this prayer of salvation tonight, I don't care if you're standing in the back or where you are. It's a prayer of salvation. See, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, salvation's for everyone. And it says it's right on the tip of our mouth. All you got to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. But I want to lead you through a short prayer, and I'm going to ask you to repeat it as loud as you can after me. And then I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing upon all these brothers and sisters in the front. But just repeat after me, everyone that wants to say it. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I'm here today on my own free will, asking you, Lord, that you'll forgive me of all the horrible things I've done. All the times I've cursed you. All the times I've doubted you. All the times I've walked away. I ask you now, Lord, forgive me. And I ask it, Lord, on my own free will. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray over all of you that's in the front here. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, there are some warriors 
that came up to this altar today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that a special anointing will come on each and every one of them. I ask, Lord, that you will allow your spiritual gifts of wisdom, knowledge, and faith to just be poured out upon them. Father, I ask that you will allow them to be steadfast in their walk. I ask that you will allow them and help them to be serious in their walk. No matter what they have to do for the kingdom of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you'll place boldness upon them. I ask that you will strengthen them. That they can stand tall when they're telling people about you. I ask that they will be able to live this walk, not just talk the talk. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that a blessing will fall upon each and every one of them. Father, I ask that each man and each woman that is up here today, that you will give them a glimpse of what lies ahead for them. Give them a glimpse of that glory. Give them a glimpse of the blessings of being steadfast. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, hug the one next to you. Come on, give them a big hug. Just reach over and grab them. Give them a hug. Listen, what does God want from each and every one of us? He wants you to get serious in everything that you're doing for the kingdom. He wants you to be able to stand up when no one else is going to stand with you. You know, one thing that I seen the other night that I loved, when we were walking through a clubhouse of a few hundred men, nobody else was handing tracts out. Can you do that on your own? See, serious people can do that. You know something that Little Wolf was doing? That I love to see him when he hands stuff out. He don't stand there and preach to anyone. Come on. People don't want to be preached at. If you're married, we get enough of that at home. You know what I'm saying. But he just handed it out. He said there'll be a lot of good things going on there. If you can come out, come on out. But it takes serious people to do the work that we're doing. Now if we got anything out of here tonight, let's get serious tomorrow. Let's get serious next week. Let's get serious with our families. I don't care how thick the roof is. I'm going to dig through it. The biggest thing you can do to get serious, look who you're hanging with. Look who you're running with. Run with people that are serious. God bless you all. Pastor, one of you pastors, come on up here. Come on. God bless you all. Thank you, Sam. Bless you, man. This has been quite a night, hasn't it? Now, look, I, I know there's been some results from the, from the bike show here. Uh, but i got to tell you something from my heart that I know it's true of Sam. I know it's true of Little Wolf and myself and Big Al. There's a scene after Jesus has risen again and he asks Peter, do you love me? Remember he does it three times? When a man or woman is called by God, that man or woman is often challenged to take the step of faith to release their trust in the things of the world, to leave everything that's familiar and be who they're called to be regardless of the cost. I told you earlier 
I had a very, had a very lucrative career. And I was told it's time. And I had heard from the Lord also. And he broke me, and he broke me, and he broke me till I was willing to submit and trust. This little church, Broken Chains Biker Church, is really a core group of maybe 30 people. Maybe 30 people having a radical impact on bikers, not just in New England, and in club members who we love as our friends, that we minister to, that we feed when their spouses are in prison, that we love on and help. And all bikers, this is a church of generosity. And the more Broken Chains Biker Church seems to give, the more people seem to come to it. I am not paid as a pastor. I really have no tangible means of making a living. Debbie and I short sold our house a little while ago. Little Wolf just moved into a trailer. Big Al lives on a ranch that's owned by somebody else. We live the most joyous lives we can possibly imagine. Largely, we are debt free, and the Lord provides for all of our needs. All of them. I'm not doing a pitch to cry. I'm saying that if you're going to be one of those people that's going to dig through that roof, be prepared to release the stuff of this world. Learn to sow. Learn to spread the seed. The word of God as well as the fruit of your labor. And the Lord will multiply it. He came down with barely enough money in his pocket. Big Alice Eves flew all the way from California to share this word. There's nothing in it for anybody. Machine Gun Preacher, when he first started out, and you even saw in the movie, he chucked everything to do what God had called him to do. I'm not going to send people around with a bucket. I'm not going to do a whole thing about if you feel like you want to bless this church that's just all about outreach, if you feel like you want to bless these men, then you dig into your pocket and you do what God's telling you to do. And if you can't do it with joy, don't do it. But if you're ready to take that step, it's not about security in the world, it's about security in Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right, Rock, you probably have a story on some of this stuff here, amen? Come on up, brother. All right. So you don't know me, I'm Pee Wee. I, uh... Been doing a show here with Rock for since we started, uh, what, five years now or so. It's, it's been a while. Every year it gets bigger and bigger, and it's been a, it's been a blessing. And, and all I tell Rock is I want to do the show. I just want to be able to, to share my testimony because uh, I was one of those guys one time. I was never in trouble with the law or nothing like that, but, you know, I was pretty talented with what I did in life. You know, I made six figures, had a great time. I got saved in 1983. 1983, I got saved. I was going to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesdays. I was running with the same people, was hanging around. Next thing I knew, I was going Sunday night, Wednesdays. Then I started going Wednesdays. Then I found myself not going. I always had an excuse why I couldn't go. Still called myself saved. I ran security at one of the biggest bars in town, Froggy Saloon, for 18 years. Met a lot of good friends there. Met one of my best friends that passed away last year, Brother Bert. Brother Bert was a preacher, and he told me, I said, Bert, why are we out here, man? What, what are we doing? You know, we're in the middle of a bar. He told me, he said, man, them rascals ain't going to come to you. You got to go out there and get them. Well, I followed Brother Bert, and we went Sturges. We went to North Carolina. We went everywhere. And uh, I still wasn't quite right. I was still slipping. 
Well, the Lord decided he was going to humble me. I was coming home after me and my best friend was up in, uh, was up in Sturgis. We'd just done 2,000 miles, run hard, run the Black Mountains at 100 mile an hour. I was a block from my house when a lady on a cell phone decided not to stop and run over me. She took my leg. At that time, I thought about it. Bert come out to see me at the hospital, and my friends came out. Dennis Munch, which is the chaplain at Tomoko Church where I go now, he came out. Ray came out. And I realized, you know what? All these guys I've partied with, no, they're not here. But all the men of God, they're here to talk to me. They're telling me something. So I was at my house after I lost my leg, and I started thinking, you know, man, I just can't, uh, I can't go on like this. It just, I, I can't do this. So I went out and uh, got on my motorcycle. Still riding after I lost my leg. I got another bike. Took up my bike, and I went down to this park. The park was a couple blocks down my house. I, I don't know why I went there. I just went there. I went there with a 38 in my hand. At that time, I got to the park, and I'm thinking to myself, well, I know this is the only sin, God, that you're not going to forgive me for. But I'm kind of asking the Lord in advance to forgive me. And, uh, you know, knowing that, that that was the only sin that he wouldn't forgive. But I saw no other way out. And I said, Lord, just, uh, just give me a sign that uh, this is okay, that you'll, you'll forgive me. Well, at that time, a hand touched me on my shoulder. I got amazed then because I didn't know what it was. If it was God or somebody going to kill me here, but I was ready to go. And I turned around, it was my wife. She knew in her heart where I'd went. Now, now, remember, I didn't tell anybody where I was going, and I didn't go to this park on a regular basis. I just happened to go there that day. And I asked her, so how did you find me? She told me, she said, somebody just led me here. So at that time, I decided, you know what? God does want me to stay here. He just humbled me. He wants me to do something. So I carried on. I learned, to, got a prostate, learned to walk again, rode my bike, started doing everything I'd done before. Wasn't, was enjoying the church. We started back in the church. Got rebaptized. Was living, you know, I... I, I Kind of down then, I'd lost everything, you know, with the accident and all. The literally hit me, I had no insurance, so I lost everything I had, but I was still carrying on. A year later, I guess I wasn't doing things just right. Because a year and one week after I'd lost my leg, I had another young lady, no insurance, no nothing, blow through a stoplight at 55 and took me out on a bike. I laid in the middle of Nova Road. I died on Nova Road, and they brought me back with the shock and brought me back alive. I was at the hospital. I'll never forget that night. Ray Kelly come out. He's taking pictures and laughing at me because once they brought me back around, they, they, I was blood from head to toe and broke my good leg, broke my arm, laid my head open, destroyed my prosthetic, destroyed my bike. And I told Ray, I said, I guess... That, the Lord's trying to humble me and tell me that I'm not doing exactly what he wants me to do. So at that time, I turned around, and I started getting real heavy, real serious, as machine gun preacher says. So I got pretty bound in, in, in Jesus. I started learning, and I found out that that time, I quit riding with a lot of my friends and all because I said, well, you know, I can't, I can't go out and ride with these guys. They're going to the bars. They're going here. They're going there. And I found out, it was the old story Brother Bert told me, I was a constipated Christian. I couldn't do Christian things in front of my friends because I didn't know what they'd think. But then as, I, as my power grew and I started realizing that I was doing the right thing, my best friends came right along and I ride with them today. And now 